Last time we had a look at this bad boy, AMD's latest flagship RX 700 XTX GPU. Ignoring all the uncanny amount of X's in the same freaking sentence, it was a relatively interesting car. A bit too expensive, but with its own benefits. However, in almost none of our benchmarks did it manage to beat the RTX 4080, which in real time was valued at about 5 Switzerland Big Macs more based on the global Big Mac index. I, I cannot believe that there is a global Big Mac index. We are so doomed. But during all of my testing time, I wondered. I am using a 13700K, an Intel 13700K. And as it turns out, most reviewers out there do use Intel chips. Not all, some also use older models and some use AMD. But as I was researching this, I found AMD to be surprisingly underrepresented given it's their own GPU. So I wondered, do AMD GPUs actually perform better if used in combination with AMD CPUs. Now an easy way to determine this would be to take a 3900K and a 7950X, combine both of them with an RX 7900XTX and call it a day, but that would be wrong. The only thing coming out of that would be a CPU comparison, and that really isn't what we are looking for. No, what I'm trying to find out is if you have a random CPU, is a RTX 4080 always the better choice, or is it possible that things start to change if you already are on Team Red and you're just adding another Red GPU? GPU to the mix. All we know for now is that as long as you have a 13700K, the 4080 is close to always the right choice. Pretty much on every metric that we have tested, the 4080 was slightly in front of the 7900XTX. Not always by a long shot, but still, overall, it was the winner. After I was done with our initial benchmarks, I took our ASRock X670E PG Lightning, slapped a 7700X in there, transplanted the power supply, installed a fresh version of Windows for absolute certainty, waited for a good 17 hours until all the games were installed again, wondered why there are no driver issues like everybody is saying all the time, and then I benchmarked every game in combination with every GPU once again. After all of that, I was left with the biggest and most depressing Excel spreadsheet I have ever created. And if you are afraid of numbers, buckle up, snort some Xanax, because you will not believe what I found once I created graph number 13. But before we try to answer the question, if AMD performs better in combination with AMD CPUs compared to Intel CPUs, here are absolutely all the game benchmarks we got during the second round of testing, every GPU in combination with a 7700X. The absolute numbers coming out of these are not really relevant to this video, but I don't want to waste all of these numbers, so if anybody is looking for a 7700X benchmark with a 7900XTX, 4090, 4080 and 3080 Ti, here you go. And just feel free to pause the video if you want to have a closer look at the numbers, if I'm going too quick. And can we just quickly admire that WoW in 4K with ray tracing runs better on a 4080 than a 4090, which makes like zero sense. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's go into the abyss of statistics that I have created. On this seemingly random combination of numbers, we can see all the game averages and 1% low values relative to a 3080 Ti using the 13700K system. Them. So to make sure that we are all on the same page, for every game the 3080 Ti performs at 0% on both values because it's the baseline. There is no increment going from 89 FPS to 89 FPS. Okay, if you were now to upgrade to a 4080, you would go from 89 FPS average in Shadow of the Tomb Raider to 125. Okay, that's 40% increment, 89 times 1.4 is 124.6, rounded up to 125, everything is correct. And then rinse and repeat the same thing for every other game in combination with every other GPU. To give you a slightly better view of things, let's remove the 3080 Ti because it's just taking up space, but do still keep in mind all these values are percentage increases coming from a 3080 Ti. The only outliners here are some frame drops from Cyberpunk and Horizon Zero Dawn, but sorry, for our benchmarks we are averaging three runs. If the card stutters on every run, 
done. There's just nothing I want to do about it. No cherry picking golden runs here. Okay, and here are the values that we did with the exact same thing using a 7700X on an X670E mainboard. Again, these are relative performance increases compared to a 3080 Ti on that system. So if we were to upgrade to a 4080, we would win 28% average FPS, which is less than the 40% increase we got when we did the same thing on a 13700K. Why is that? Well, the most obvious answer would be CPU bottleneck. But let's already be realistic. There is more than just one CPU is better than another one. There is more to that. Anyway, here again, we have a couple of frame drops here and there. And funnily enough, Horizon Zero Dawn just lost a percentage compared to a 3080 Ti, which again makes like zero sense. But uh, hey, on the grand scheme of things, a 4080 is generally a win and a 4090 would be another win. But now coming to the big Xanax and Forza of today's video. Every game in combination with every GPU in combination with both a 7700X and 13700K on a single graph. What a freaking monster. The top part of the graph would be the 7700X and the bottom half is the 13700K. And we can already see some interesting things here. Like for example that as far as Shadow of the Tomb Raider is concerned, you will win significantly less performance if you upgrade to a 4080 if you are on a 7700X. If you are, you're looking at 21 and 28% more FPS average and 1% lows. On a 13700K on the other hand, you will win a full 36 and 40%. Now again, do keep in mind, those are relative percentage increases not absolute numbers. This means that if a 7700X would start off with, let's say, 100 FPS, and you get a 20% boost on average, you are now looking at 120 FPS. If a 13700K would start off at, let's say, 50, add 40% to that, and you now have 70. The absolute numbers are worse, but the relative performance increases, or the scaling, or however you want to call it, is bigger. But now let's apply some actual numbers to that. On a 13700K, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on 4K highest preset, no ray tracing, started off at 89 FPS. Going to a 4080 got us 125 FPS, so the 40% increase we had in the beginning of this video. And now comes the point, for a 7700K, we we are going from the same starting point of exactly 89 FPS on average. Yes, Shadow of the Tomb Raider performs plus minus 1% the same on a 7700X and 13700K, which is why I'm going with this as my baseline. It's, it's amazing. Average FPS, 1% lows, everything is plus minus 1 FPS the same. It's amazing. Anyway, going to a 4080, we got a pump to 114 FPS, so the 28% increase. And these values are now extremely important because they are showing that although we are starting off at the same starting point, we got a bigger boost on Team Blue compared to Team Red. Again, CPU bottleneck or are there more ways around this? On this graph, we average the number of every game to the used GPU. So we know that generally going from a 3080 Ti to a 4080 will give us a 28% boost in, in more average FPS on a 13700K and doing the same on a 77 700X will give us only 13%. Going up to a 4090 will yield us a ridiculous 63% more average frames and only roughly half that increase when going AMD. But here you can already see where I am going with this. On Intel, you will get a boost when going 4080 and another boost when going 4090. But then going to a 7900XTX, which is actually the main topic of today's video but wasn't mentioned for like the last five minutes. Anyway, going for a 7900XTX, we get a major drawback, a drawback big enough that we are back to slightly below 4080 performance. Now on a 7700X system, this is a different game. There we get a small bump going 4080, a bigger bump when going to 4090, but then going 7900X, it's not a drawback, not at all. The average frames may be slightly lower, but the 1% lows are significantly higher. They are actually higher than a 4090. So on average, games will feel smoother or there will be less stuttering and less frame drops when using a 7900XTX compared to a 4090. That's insane. Summoning another average spell on all of these finally makes the whole thing easy to read. Averaging the average FPS and 1% low FPS counter on all six benchmark games on a per GPU basis and then averaging those two numbers again paints a really important picture. 
when upgrading from a 3080 Ti to a 4080 is more beneficial than upgrading to a 7900 XTX. Not a lot, but still. Going to a 4090 is a whole different game, that the differences are enormous. But on a 7700X it is completely different, there the 7900 XTX is actually the king of the 7700X graph. Sure, the best case scenario seems still to be a 13700K in combination with a 4090, but the fact that the 7900 XTX does not scale somewhat the same on both sides already shows why it's extremely important to take a look at more than just a single review from more than just a single source who used just one single CPU. But all of this averaging does still leave a huge issue unchecked. Every percentage value on this screen is relative to the performance of a 3080 Ti on the specific platform. Meaning that if the starting points are different, the outcome may be a lot different. That's why I'm averaging everything again and again and again, and the more I do it with a bigger starting pool set, the less important frame spikes and drops will become. But let's go back to the prime example of Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the exact same starting point. If we were now to upgrade to a 7900X, we are looking at 117 FPS, which is 31% higher than on the 3080. Now, if we do the same thing on a 7700X system, we are looking at 120 FPS average, which is a 35% increase. So looking at the bigger picture here, not only is it better to upgrade to a 7900XTX on a 7700X system compared to a 4080, but if CPU bottleneck would really be the only issue here, there couldn't be a difference produced by a 7900XTX upgrade on both systems. But there is, even on absolute numbers. Now what's really interesting here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider is not the only game that this has happened. Horizon Zero Dawn, Intel starting point 89 FPS going to 4080 gives us 114 FPS and going RX 900 XTX only 107 on average. Do the same thing on AMD and we are starting at 88, going to only 87 on a 4080 which doesn't make a lot of sense and back to 109 on an RX 7900 XTX. Mind you the game performs overall roars on a 7700X but the point here is that the relation between a 4080 and a 7900 XTX switches when an AMD CPU is used. Cyberpunk is producing roughly the same thing with the 7900 XTX being the overall winner but WoW is back to 7900 X being the biggest winner. Metro Exodus is then back to the initial thing again on Intel the 4080 is better than in 7900 XTX but on Ryzen it's the other way around. Far Cry 6 is back to cyberpunk logic with the 7900 XTX being the overall winner. So what was the point of all of these numbers? Generally speaking considering that we benchmarked only six games and uh, everything I'm saying is based on those six games it seems like a 7900 XTX performs better inside an AMD system compared to an Intel system. A, my weird ass average of an average of an average percentage increase showed it and because going from this column to this column feels better than going from this one to this one although the starting points were pretty damn close. And why are, is all of this? Smart access memory. Sure Reaper also exists on Nvidia and Intel side but as far as my own findings for now are concerned Reaper seems to have a much bigger impact on AMD AMD systems that it can position the 7900 XTX above the 4080, which is pretty damn wild. If you haven't noticed, until now I have not even once included ray tracing options in all of this. And this is reason, because AMD sucks at it. If you were to do the same thing with 4K ray tracing enabled titles, the only two scenarios in which all of which we found would apply are Far Cry 6, which doesn't do a lot of ray tracing, and WoW, uh, the game that prefers 4080s above 4090s. So yeah, AMD AMD combination seems to scale better than an Intel AMD combination or a AMD Nvidia combination as long as rasterization is concerned. But okay, this should be it for today's adventure into my Excel skill set. I hope you found this just as interesting as I did, or at least entertaining. I, I hope you found this entertaining. But if you want to continue watching entertaining stuff, have a look at our take on the individual review about the 700 XTX. And by the way, we also have a Discord server that slowly fills up, so if you want to join, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.